Hi, this is Scott Miller. Welcome to my top performance blog. Today, I am speaking with Marietta Yeager, who has experienced something that not many people, thankfully, in the world experience. And I reached out to Marietta a couple of weeks ago because I think her story and what she did in response to the events that took place in her life is not only remarkable, but could be helpful to many of us during these challenging and difficult times. Hello, Marietta. Hello, Scott. Thanks so much for speaking with me today. Oh, I'm, I'm very happy to have this opportunity. You've been a rather tireless advocate for something ever since the tragic events with your seven-year-old daughter, Susie, took place. And I wanted to talk with you about how you managed to do what you did, and in particular, to forgive the person who hurt your daughter and hurt your family. Well, I'm grateful for the opportunity to share my experience. I hope it would be helpful for other people. I posted below a link to the television news story through which I first heard about you. Your daughter was taken and murdered. The tragic event, but what you did following that is inspiring as well as I think for many people, deeply challenging. You literally forgave the person who did this. And I guess I'm wondering how you managed to do that. How did you do it? <laughs> well, um, it was, um, you know, forgiveness is, uh, it requires daily diligent discipline. And um, I had to work hard to accomplish that. But uh, my biggest challenge was um, uh, whether or not to forgive because my initial response was um, a normal, valid human response of a mother whose little girl had been, you know, raped and murdered. Mm -hmm. And um, so initially, uh, for a good week, I guess, after Susie was taken, I... Um, my my whole focus was not on anger, but was on where is she, how is she, how can I get her back? Mm -hmm. And um, finally, the day came where um, I just, it, you know, uh, how can I say this? It, it may sound very stupid even, but it's like I really got for the first time in touch with my rage. Mm. And it was it was actually a frightening experience for me, mm. and I I began to focus on um, what would I do if the FBI brought the F kidnapper to me and said, "Okay, Marietta, have at him. You can do whatever you want. You won't get in trouble." Mm. What would I do? I knew that I could kill this man with my bare hands and a smile on my face for what he has done to my family. Um, and we were still out in Montana, and we were sleeping in the back of my parents' van. Um, I said to my husband, even if the kidnapper were to bring Susie back alive and well this moment, I could kill him for what he has done to my family. Mm -hmm. And I knew that I could do it, and um, and I was okay with it. And I turned over to go to sleep, and... And this is what happened. I heard God say to me, but that's not how I want you to feel. Mm. And, um, you know, and I'm justifying myself. I, I actually you know, started wrestling with God, you know, de defending my stance. Yeah. You know, I have a right. This is an innocent, defenseless little girl. And I'm her mother. And it's all normal that I should feel this way. I, I could not say, okay, I forgive him because I could not deny the murderous feelings that were still in my heart. At that point, I had no idea who he was. Right. I mean, it took us 15 months to discover, um, you know, who he was. And, 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 Mar and Marietta, uh, what are we talking about here in terms of time? So 
there were weeks actually that went by where you were still camped out near the headwaters of the Missouri River. And the FBI and the local uh, authorities are working. Are we talking a, a short period of time where you're having this wrestling match with that inner voice that, that the, 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 what, what the counsel you're receiving? How, how long before you say, okay, I put it in your hands, however? Um, it started in the morning and ended that night after, after I turned over to go to sleep. Mm -hmm. And so from that point on, um, I tried to do the things that I felt that I could do. I can remember in the story, you said you tried to think positive thoughts towards him, almost sending them his way, simple things. You I did. So um, he is deserving of my prayers, my concern. And um, I mean, and it was, it, it didn't, it wasn't something that happened all at once. It just was right. a, a gradual work in progress, reminding myself and trying to pray for good things to happen to him. They were simple things because I had no idea who he was. Right. So it was like, if he's fishing or hunting, may he have a good catch. You know, if mm. he's traveling, may he not have any car trouble, that sort of thing. It, I think right. a challenge for a lot of people is how do you practice this without seemingly condoning the behavior? Was that, was that a challenge for you? By thinking a positive thought, I'm, I'm in a way acting as though this is, this was okay. Well, you, you strike a good note because um, that was part of my challenge initially, at least it was, would I be violating Susie by being willing to forgive a person who would do such things to her? And I mean, and I really did, had no idea what was happening to Susie, not for 15 months, but, right. but, but that was, that was initially my struggle. But eventually I felt for the sake of my own soul and, and hopefully for the sake of whoever had taken her that I needed to follow through on my desire to at least r arrive to at a place where I could have some concern and compassion. I, I could never con condone anything that he had done, but but I was willing to relinquish the just punishment that he an appropriate punishment that he was due, and put it in the hands of the law, God, how, you know, whoever's going to right. determine his judgment. I, I was holding him responsible. Right. And yet I was saying, I recognize that you're a wounded human being. Right. And this seems to me to be part of forgiveness that I try to wrap my head, head around. First is you're trying to engender and, and you eventually do offer a kind of empathy and compassion that I think served in many ways as the linchpin to solving uh, the, 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 the case, who it was and learning what happened to Susie. But one of the other pieces is then you decided that retribution and revenge had to be left over to a higher authority, be that on earth or in, 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 on a different plane. Am I understanding right. that correct? Yes, yes, that, that, is, that is very true. My basic concern was this man's soul. Mm. And, uh, and I felt that for me to maintain an attitude of, of unforgiveness for him, of hatred for him, would, would be detrimental not only to me but to him. And and I thought the only way we could resolve this and find out what happened and and hopefully get Susie back in all these months of waiting and waiting in an unknown state. And and actually the FBI do credit me with solving the case because on that on that first year anniversary when the kidnap when I finally got to talk to the kidnapper myself, he mm -hmm. called me one year to the minute that he had taken Susie out of our tent. And 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 as I'm hearing his voice, all that I had the chosen to do to feel came to fruition in me. I mean, and I was 
uh, to my own surprise, I was um, filled with feelings of, um, at, at least in the beginning, concern for him, reaching out to him. What can I do to help him? And actually, that's what I asked him. What can I do to help you? And um, he broke down and he wept. And he wept. Right. He, his intention was to uh, call, you know, uh, just give me a hard time for five minutes and then hang up. And right. he ended up staying on the phone for an hour and a half. And, and in that milieu of concern and compassion for him, he inadvertently revealed enough information about himself that the FBI were finally able to identify him. Well, and I can remember you had... He had asked you whether or not the call was being recorded, which it was, and you lied. I did. Here's the part that's so hard to wrap your head around. You <laughs> felt bad <laughs> about lying. Well, that's me trying to be a good girl, you know. <laughs> so uh, I did, uh, you know, but I but, uh, finally justified it. Like it was necessary in order to get, find out what happened to my little girl. Always, that was my, that was my focus. When this case was, was resolved and the person who had taken Susie had been identified, picked up, and caught, he ends up taking his own life. Right, right. Which, in a way, if you're in to try to get retribution or justice steals some of the thunder. Right. But I didn't want, at that point, he was being charged with a capital crime of kidnap murder. Right. And for which, the, the penalty for which was the death penalty in the state of Montana. And I did not want to kill any kill him in Susie's name, so to speak. Right. So that would be a, a violation and would profane the goodness and beauty of who Susie was. Maybe it's too strong of a word, but you ex you befriended. I was going to say, perhaps that's not the right word, but you extended compassion towards his mother. I, I couldn't imagine how she was coping with this horrible information about the son whom she loved. He was a good son to her. He took care yeah. of her. Yeah. He cut her lawn. He cut her medicine. So um, I, I couldn't. So I, I thought, well, I, if I go to her, maybe it would help her to know that I had forgiven her son. <clears throat> you know, that might assuage some of this horror that she yeah. had to deal with. Yeah. And and I did befriend her, actually. I did years later. I married a rancher out in Montana and, and, and actually was able to visit with her a lot of times. Marietta, can I ask you, how have others, did, were people in agreement? Were family members in agreement? Did they try to follow suit or what happened with those? Nobody ever question me and at first it seemed like they were all they all felt well this is her daughter she has the right to to say what's going to happen so to speak mm -hmm. and uh i know you know since in all the years since there have been people who said well, boy if that happened to my little girl there's no way i you know i don't want to go get my gun and blow his blow his head off I understand that because that was my initial reaction. Right. I mean, I, you know, I was at that place where I would have been happy to take this man's life, but, but, you know, hate isn't healthy. And, and, and it's been my experience that, that many of the root causes of our mental and physical illnesses are uh, forgiveness, um, resentment, uh, desires for revenge. It, it, it takes, uh, unforgiveness takes their life breath away from us, I think. Right. And, and sadly, uh, my husband was an example of that. He was not come to an end even concerned for the kidnapper. He remained um, in an unsatisfied 
state of mind. And he ended up dying. He was a, a strong, healthy man, and he ended up dying an early death. You know, there's a Chinese proverb that says, those who seek revenge should dig two graves. And I've re- I have really seen that. Um, I-, I know I'm, I'm far more healthier now, emotionally, uh, psychologically, than I would be if I had been holding on to a desire for, uh, for revenge because it, it wouldn't change the reality that I had to learn to live with that Susie's life was taken. And Marietta, if you're not chained to the past, as you say, what is your relationship to the past and the events that took place now? Well, it's a reality that I have to live with. I don't have to dwell on it. Um, yeah, I mean, in terms of everything that happened to Susie, uh, that is just too painful for me. Yeah. And it and it serves no good. Um, uh, I felt eventually um, called to help co-found an organization of murder victim family members, mm-hmm. and who are willing to be even reconciled with the the offenders in their case. Um, and they're comprised of people of all different faiths and no faith. Mm-hmm. And uh, called Journey of Hope from Violence to Healing. Right. And we go on tours and share our experiences uh, in the hopes of helping people understand there's, there is a better way to go, a way that is much more healthy for us. And uh, forgiveness really sets us free to go on and become the people that we are called to be. Marietta, thanks so much for taking the time with me today. And I wish you all the best, you and your family going forward. Oh, thank you, Scott. Thank you. Uh, I hope whatever I could say would be helpful to people. Thank you for giving me that opportunity.